This week on my channel, I'm featuring one young, adventurous woman's beautiful RV renovation and spirited lifestyle. I just love Lindsay's outlook on life and happiness, especially because she was willing to turn down a well-paying job to pursue her dream of living an off-grid, nomadic lifestyle. Like the age-old saying goes, money can't buy you happiness. I'm Lindsay. We are here boondocking outside of Yellowstone in my RV. So I've been on the road full time for a little over a year now, and I've always been you know, an adventurer. I love rock climbing, backpacking, hiking, skiing. And I was like, well, what if I could just kind of like immerse myself in that full time instead of it being Saturday, Sunday, I rush out and like go and try and do those things. What if I could just live in those places instead? And like after work, if I want to go do a hike in Zion, I can. When I'm stationary, then I feel like I'm settling into something that I don't want. By ripping out my safety net every couple of years, it's put me into positions where I'm opening myself up to opportunities that you're being presented every day. I got an opportunity with a startup in New York City and I was like seeing dollar signs, right? It came to like a fork in the road in my life. If I go down this direction, I'm dedicating the next three to five years of my life to chasing money. The other option is to say, I can't do it and hit the road and live the life I wanna live. Money is not a motivator for me. Why am I chasing this? I was going back and forth. Here's the pros and cons. Which one should I do? What do you think? Almost every single person I talked to told me, like, Lindsay, it sounds like you already made up your mind. Luckily for me, I have literally not for one day, not one second, wish I had taken that job. I lived in Nashville before getting the RV, and the last place that I had there was a two-bedroom duplex with like a full basement, and it was full of stuff, you know? It's like, that's just what happens. When you have the space, you fill the space. So moving into the RV, it was a bit of a challenge, but also like a little bit freeing. Not a little bit freeing, it was very freeing. <laughs> My decision was to basically buy the newest, best condition RV that I could. Instead of buying a house and putting a down payment on a house, I took that same amount of money and put it into an RV. So we kind of sped through a lot of the renovations and I had my family helping me, which was very, very fortunate. I had a specific day that I had to hit the road to get to a music festival. <laughs> I was meeting my sister at Stagecoach out in Indio. I didn't have new floors down. I had ripped up the old floors. I didn't have running water. There was a lot that just like wasn't done yet. But yeah, the bulk of it was like honestly done in like three or four weeks. And then the rest of it over the next few months while I was traveling. This is how my ideal house would have been designed. As far as like living in a big house versus living tiny, I don't honestly miss very much. I miss normal showers. <laughs> I miss a nice long hot shower. <laughs> I'm super, super lucky. So my company is fully remote. Everyone from my company is fully remote. And so I took on this job at the same time that I was transitioning into the RV. So while I was interviewing with them, I told them that I was going to be doing this and they were really supportive of it. Companies are more open to it than you'd think. Do planning on your end beforehand. This is how I think that I can make it work. This is how I'm gonna go out of my way to accommodate the business. I think a lot of employers, especially nowadays with people working from home a lot more, companies aren't really responsive to it. This isn't any different from working from home. So a lot of people ask me, do you have a solar setup? How do you charge your devices when you're working from the road? And I'm one of the rare people who boondocks a lot who doesn't actually have solar panels on my roof. But what I do have is I have this little Jackery power station 
and a solar panel. And so anytime that I set up camp, I put these things out. This is like the first thing I do. I put the solar panel out, I start charging the Jackery, and I'm able to power my laptop, um, my phone, and my projector, which I have inside, which I watch Netflix and things like that on, all from the Jackery. So it's really been all that I need. This is my RV. It is a 28 foot class C motorhome. It's a 2006 and I got it a little over a year ago. When I got it, there was I think 45,000 miles on it and I've put another like 25,000 on it in the last year, just traveling around. We've got two slide outs on the other side, which gives me a lot more space. And we've got a bunch of storage on the outside as well. So I'll show you guys around. So this is on a Ford E450 Super Duty. So I think that's a van chassis. I get about eight, eight and a half miles to the gallon right now. Um, when I first started out, I was driving a little bit too fast and I was carrying a lot more weight before I got rid of a lot of stuff. And I was only getting around like five-ish miles per gallon at that point. So by dropping weight, by driving slower, you can just improve your gas mileage a lot. Also, you might notice that I've got this little black antenna on the front. That's a cell signal booster. So when we're camping out in these remote areas, that's gonna take whatever cell signal you're getting and it's just gonna amplify it. And it enables me to take video calls and work remotely while I'm out in these kind of dispersed camping areas. In here, we have our generator. So anytime that I'm not connected to shore power, which is most of the time, because I'm usually boondocking out with no hookups, I can run anything electrical off of this generator. So that's really nice. This next one is my camping stove. Sometimes it's hot, you don't wanna cook inside, or you have a beautiful view and you don't wanna sit inside during sunset when you could be cooking outside. So I have a little two burner camping stove that I can pull out, set it up on my table and cook outside, which is a really nice perk. I don't tow a vehicle behind me. A lot of people with class C's will tow a vehicle behind them so that when they get into a spot like this, that they're able to just take their car, go into town. They don't have to drive their whole rig there. So I got a bike. Um, so that's how I get around. I was parked over in the Badlands up on this beautiful overview a few weeks ago, and there's just trails for miles and miles. And I would just take this and I'm like looking over this insane view. And I'm like, how is this my morning? So yep, this is my, my main mode of transportation once I'm hunkered down in a camping spot. Oh. <laughs> Come on inside. All right guys, welcome inside. Um, we'll start with the kitchen. So all of this pretty much is original. Um, how I got it, I just painted it and changed out the hardware. So we got a tiny little stove right here with my cat towel, because you know, crazy cat lady. I have not yet found a pan that will fit inside here. <laughs> They're all way too big, but I do cook things in there like in little Pyrex dishes and things like that. But I honestly use the stove top more and that just runs off of propane. So it runs off of the same propane that the heat runs off of. And actually the propane powers my fridge also. So that runs all the time, even if I'm not connected to power. So that's really nice. This is actually a pretty good sized fridge, honestly, for what I have. When I lived in an apartment, my fridge was always like a quarter full. This is all the storage that I need. Pretty good sized freezer. Got some Otter Pops, cause you know, you never grow up. I don't use the microwave very much. Got my little bare salt and pepper shakers. I got those from my mom for Christmas and they just, you feel a little homey. A lot of this stuff that you see on the counters, when I'm driving, I just move it into the sink so that it doesn't bounce around or fall off when I'm driving. So a lot of our viewers, that's kind of what we do as we're driving around is that we move and we use the sink as storage. <laughs> we're going into the bathroom here. So 
Um, in the bathroom, I just have the toilet and the shower and my sink and vanity are actually outside, which I really, really love. Gives me a lot of area to, you know, get ready, brush my teeth, all that good stuff. Welcome to my very massive RV bathroom. <laughs> tiny, tiny, tiny. So we've got a little RV toilet down here, nothing special. And then in here, I have the shower. So we actually ripped out the shower completely and put up sheet vinyl around it, replace all the hardware, just to make it a little bit cuter, a little more homey, which in hindsight was a lot of work to put into something that is essentially just a litter box storage area. I keep the cat's litter box in here, pull it out when I need to use the shower. I have a freshwater tank that is 33 gallons. If I conserve a lot, it can last me like maybe up to two weeks, um, but probably around like a week if I'm not super, super hard trying to conserve it. All right. Now, if you come all the way across the hallway, we got the sink and vanity area. I love this little corner. It's so cute. And when I'm laying in my bed, this is what I see, and I've got my little aloe plant. It's fake. So this whole thing is actually a slide out. When I'm driving around, that's pulled all the way in. Feels a little bit more cramped in here. But once I'm parked, I slide that out, get tons of space. This bed, this is what we call an RV queen. So it's a queen size sideways, but lengthwise it's like six inches shorter, I think. Up here I've got a little projector and then I've got a projector screen that I can move between the bedroom and the living room. I've got my shoe storage all up in here too because I still have way too many pairs of shoes. I have so much storage space. I keep a lot of different clothes in here. So camp clothes, and then I've got my professional from the, the waist up clothes for when I have to do video calls. And then I have all my hiking, climbing stuff down below. It was really nice that I just kind of had the storage space to, to have those options. And then all these decorations were all from my old apartment. So it just feels like home. So this is my living area. And honestly, this is where I spend most of my time. Working remotely, I work from here. On Friday nights, once I'm done work, pop this table out, put it up in the over cab, and this just turns into my weekend couch zone. And this, when I first got it, was super 90s. It was a rounded couch turned into a bed. It was not pretty. And so this is one of the things that we actually structurally changed. And so I reupholstered cushions. We built a bench that's underneath here for storage. I have all of my tools stored, got electronics, games. And then also there's a piece of one under here that'll slide out and this will turn into a bed so that I have kind of a little guest room when people stay over. I don't necessarily think that my priorities have shifted as much as my true priorities in life have kind of come to the surface. <laughs> Chasing happiness, being in nature, spending quality time with people. Money is less important to me than happiness. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's home tour. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell so that you get a notification every time I post a new video. Mm -hmm.